at Three Rivers Bible Church, Kelso, Washington. Uh, we are online again right now because uh, there's been so much uh, sickness in the community and also some sickness in our church. And so uh, we decided to close down the church again for a while. So we're back online uh, during this time, during this pandemic. And uh, we're so sorry about that. And know that we are praying for uh, all of you people, praying for our body here in the church, and praying that God would uh, bring healing and restoration to each one of them. And for those who are uh, not going through any illness, well, we miss you and are looking forward to when we can begin meeting again. So, especially now, this is just uh, five days before Christmas. We celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the greatest, uh, greatest thing, greatest time of the year. So anyway, uh, we want to bring a short word to you from the Word of God this morning uh, to our church body and uh, whoever else may listen. You know, the pandemic and everything that's going around, uh, the trouble, the election, uh, all the trouble in our country as well as in the world, it's amazing to me that uh, in our own nation, uh, this Christmas season, the, uh, according to the Gallup polls that was just taken in the year 2020, uh, Americans will spend over, listen, over $1 trillion on Christmas this year. Over $1 trillion on Christmas this year. Uh, pollsters uh, went out and asked thousands and thousands of people in America, across the nation, of what they expected to spend on Christmas this year. And the uh, average was $1,000. Each person said they expect to spend $1,000 trying to find that greatest gift, that special gift uh, for people in their uh, family and, and friends that they're going to buy gifts for. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Uh, that much money. What do you remember? What was the greatest gift you ever received? Uh, I'm reminded of a story that happened back in the mid-90s, in 1994. In 1994, Harvard uh, University Law School uh, received a gift, and they said that it was the greatest gift they ever had received or ever could receive. It was the greatest gift they ever received. That gift was $13 million given to the school. $13 million. What would you do? Somebody gave you $13 million. This is the greatest gift they ever had, they said. The persons who gave it were Gustav and Rita Hosser. And the story behind it is that Gustav and Rita Hosser, some years back in the 50s, went to Harvard Law School. And while they were there, they met each other, of course, and uh, went through the college and through the courses and everything. And then upon graduation, they married. Now, they never did practice law, but uh, Gustav went on to uh, become very successful in business. In fact, he became the uh, CEO of Hosser Communications and the head of Warner Brothers uh, Cable Unit. He also pioneered cable television. And he was a developer of the Nickelodeon channel. So he became very successful. And so all these years later, uh, in the mid-1900s, or 1950s, excuse me, 1990s, they donated this huge gift to the school because they said they were instrumental in matchmaking, bringing them together. And they were so thankful and so grateful. And so they gave it. So... Harvard Law School said this was the greatest gift they could ever get. Greatest gift. What is the greatest gift you've ever had? What is the greatest gift you could ever get? I want to share with you the greatest gift this morning. And of course, the greatest gift is going to come from the greatest gift giver. And the greatest gift giver is God, the Lord God Almighty. He is the greatest gift giver. The scripture says 
that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Savior. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.8 that uh, for by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. See, a gift of God. God is the greatest gift giver, and he gives the greatest gift. And we are celebrating that gift in five more days, Christmas. Christmas, the time of Christ. I want to read to you the story that you've heard many, many times, but listen to it again, that idea, the greatest gift that is to be given, down through the annals of time, and God, in his own time, his own way, did it. This is the way. I'm reading in Luke's Gospel, the second chapter, of course. It says, In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came, the appointed time, for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths, strips of linen, really, and placed him in a manger. The Greek word brings it out that it was a feeding trough, because there was no room for them in the end. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Who wouldn't be? But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Now, there are lots of babies probably born at that time or around that time, and they wrapped many times their babies in linen strips or cloths, but none of them were in a manger, in a feeding trough. That was the sign that the angel was given to these shepherds. You'll find the baby lying in a manger. Suddenly, the scripture says, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, listen, and to on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. The greatest gift of all. Paul refers to it in 2 Corinthians 9.15. He says, thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift or his indescribable gift. You remember the uh, old advertisements years ago about the uh, Almond Joys or Mounds candy bars? They used to say they were indescribably delicious, meaning they couldn't describe it. It was beyond words, beyond the human language to describe it. Well, that is a strength of this word here, the Greek word here, that says indescribable or unspeakable. It means it cannot be told. It's unable to recount. It's unable to tell fully. God's unspeakable gift, the greatest gift, and that was the Lord Jesus Christ and what he brought, what he brought to all those who would believe in him and trust in him. Notice what the angels said. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests, or as the King James puts it, goodwill toward men. Peace on earth. Now he's not talking about uh, the absence of war or the absence of hostility, that kind of peace. He's talking about peace with God. Peace with God. Jesus brings us to that place of peace with God. MacArthur put it this way concerning that verse. He says, God's peace is not a reward for those who have goodwill, but a gracious gift to those who are objects of his, his goodwill, God's goodwill. Peace with God. Because the Bible teaches that we are at enmity with God. The Bible says that because of our evil behavior, our sinfulness as human beings, we are at enmity with God. That's what it says in Colossians 1. It says in verse 21, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. We're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. But God in his grace and mercy brought us into peace with himself. He says, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through the death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. We were enemies to God. You probably didn't know that, but we were because of our evil nature, our desires, our evil desires of, of our mind, sin that dwells within us. But now we are at peace with God for those who have trusted and believed the gospel. God is a great gift giver. He is the one who gives. And what can you give God in return? Only yourself. Only yourself. To believe the gospel. To believe in Jesus. To trust him. We're going to celebrate Christmas. This is a celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. God is dwelling in flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of God. Christmas. That's what we're going to celebrate. The birth of Jesus, God's greatest gift, who brings us peace with God through our faith and trust in him and gives to us everlasting life, eternal life by his goodness and his grace and his gift. I hope and trust and pray that you have trusted Christ as your Savior, that he is your Savior, has come into your heart and life, and that you have been born anew, born again into the family of God, that you've accepted this gift that God longs to give each one, to give you. I pray that that has happened to you, that you've trusted him. I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, a blessed Christmas, and that you will be blessed of the Lord in the coming year. God bless you.